It's time for your Farm News Week in Review for the week of July 4th from Little Falls Radio. This is Farm Director Scott Colomb. This week in Farm News, the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service has finalized a rule that will allow regions of Argentina and Brazil to export fresh beef into the United States, drawing protests from a prominent congressional food safety critic as well as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. In a press release, APHIS said that it will allow imports from the two regions under specific conditions that mitigate the risk of foot and mouth disease. The agency noted that its risk assessments indicate that the beef can be safely imported. Representative Rosa DeLauro, a Connecticut Democrat, said she was greatly disappointed in the decision. She pointed out that the U.S. has not had a case of foot and mouth disease since 1929, thanks in part to rules that ban importation of live animals and meat from countries such as Brazil and Argentina, which have experienced foot and mouth disease outbreaks. Technically, the rule is two separate rules, one for each country, that have moved together throughout the rulemaking process. Earlier, APHIS was criticized for moving the rules to the Office of Management and Budget on May 22nd, the Friday before the Memorial Day weekend, when the development would get little attention. According to APHIS, live cattle remain under an import ban, and this rule only applies to fresh beef. The rule will likely go into effect in late August or early September, 60 days after being published in the Federal Register. An estimated 66.9 million hogs and pigs are being raised in the United States, that as of June 1st, up 9% from a year earlier and up slightly from March 1st, this according to the USDA this week in a quarterly report. More indication that the U.S. pork industry has recovered from the porcine epidemic diarrhea virus. The gastrointestinal virus first appeared in U.S. herds in April of 2013, eventually killing millions of animals, mostly piglets, through dehydration. Mature hogs often recovered. During the height of the outbreak last spring, cases were being confirmed on more than 300 farms a week. But in the week ending on June 18th, there were only 45 so-called positive assessments, according to the American Association of Swine Veterinarians. On Wednesday, the Obama administration invited communities to participate in Local Foods, Local Places, a federal initiative providing direct technical support to build strong local food systems as part of a community's emerging economic action plans. Under this effort, a team of agricultural, transportation, public health, environmental, and regional economic experts will work directly with local communities to spur local economic growth and improve the quality of life for all residents. Local food sales topped $11.7 billion last year, this according to industry estimates, underscoring the economic benefit that a local food system can offer a community. As part of the announcement, the USDA released an updated state-by-state -state Made in Rural America report illustrating the impact of the USDA's investments in rural communities, including local food. The USDA has invested more than $800 million in more than 29,000 local and regional food businesses and infrastructure projects over the past six years. Agriculture Deputy Secretary Krista Hardin this week announced that starting on Wednesday, dairy farmers could enroll in the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Margin Protection Program for coverage in 2016. The voluntary program, established by the 2014 Farm Bill, provides financial assistance to participating dairy operations when the margin, which is the difference between the price of milk and feed costs, falls below the coverage level selected by the farmer. Hardin made the announcement while visiting Wolf's Neck Farm and Dairy School in Freeport, Maine. Dairy operations enrolling in the program must meet conservation compliance provisions. Producers participating in the Livestock Grows Margin Insurance Program may register for the Margin Protection Program, but this new margin program will only begin once their livestock dairy insurance coverage has ended. Producers must also submit Form CCC-782 for 2016, confirming their Margin Protection Program coverage level selection to their local Farm Service Agency office. If electing higher coverage for 2016, dairy producers can either pay the premium in full at the time of enrollment or pay a minimum of 25% of the premium by February 1st. Boris Roberts has announced that he will resign as the head of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association at the end of the month. According to an NCBA release, Roberts, who has been at the helm of the nation's largest beef producer organization since January of 2009, is leaving to pursue other opportunities in the cattle industry and agribusiness. In a statement, Roberts said that it has been a privilege to serve as the NCBA's CEO for the last six years, and he leaves the organization with great memories. 
Roberts came to the organization after 16 years in marketing and sales in the animal health industry. He was most recently the marketing manager for Elenico's beef business unit. In addition to working with the NCBA, Roberts was also involved with other industry-related organizations such as the U.S. Farmers and Ranchers Alliance, where he was on the founding board of directors. NCBA Chief Operating Officer Kendall Frazier has been named interim CEO to manage the day-to-day -day operations, including agency staff, until a new CEO is identified. President Obama signed into law a trade promotion bill that ensures new agreements can get through Congress without risk of amendment, but he warned that tough negotiations were still ahead before the pending Trans-Pacific Partnership is ready for lawmakers to consider. Obama also signed a bill renewing trade adjustment assistance programs and duty-free preferences for imports from poor nations. As he signed the bills, he was flanked by several cabinet officials, including Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack and lawmakers who helped with passage of the bill, including the Chairman of the House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Trade, Pat Tibri of Ohio, Representative Ron Kind of Wisconsin, and Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. Notably missing from the ceremony was the bipartisan trio that led the negotiations over the legislation, the chairman and ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee, Orrin Hatch of Utah and Ron Wayden of Oregon, and also the chairman of the Ways and Means, Paul Ryan of Wisconsin. Congress was on recess this week. Obama did not give a time frame for finishing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, but he did give a nod to the anti-TPA lawmakers but the public has been unable to see text of the trade deal that has already been negotiated. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack and United States Trade Representative Michael Froman this week announced the appointment of 129 private sector members to the Agricultural Policy Advisory Committee and six Agricultural Technical Advisory Committees. Congress established the Advisory Committee system in 1974 to ensure a private sector voice in establishing U.S. agricultural trade policy objectives to reflect U.S. commercial and economic interests. The U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative jointly manage the committees. The APAC provides advice and information to the Secretary of Agriculture and the U.S. Trade Representative on the administration of trade policy, including enforcement of existing trade agreements and negotiating objectives for new ones. The ATACs offer technical support and advice about specific commodities and products. The group of committee members will serve until June 15, 2019. Attorneys General from 13 states have filed a lawsuit on Monday challenging the EPA's new rule defining the waters of the United States, asserting that the rule expands the scope of the clean water regulations to lands that are dry much of the year and increases the federal government's authority over land use. The case was filed in the U.S. District Court for the District of North Dakota. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley, who joined in this lawsuit, noted that 35 states have filed comments in opposition to the rule and several other attorneys general are considering filing challenges. In their complaint, the states contend that the new definition of the waters of the United States violates provisions of the Clean Water Act, the National Environmental Policy Act, and the United States Constitution. The states assert that the EPA's rule inappropriately broadens federal authority by placing a majority of water and land resources management in the hands of the federal government. Congress and the courts have repeatedly affirmed that the states have primary responsibility for the protection of intrastate waters and land management. Jackley said in his release, the states argue that the burdens created by the new EPA requirements on waters and lands are harmful to the states and will negatively affect agriculture economic development. Participating in the filing are attorneys general from the states of Alaska, Arkansas, Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Mexico, North Dakota, and South Dakota, as well as Wyoming. The lawsuit seeks an order declaring that the rule is unlawful and prohibiting the agencies from implementing it. Without such an order, the rule takes effect within 60 days. And that concludes this week's Farm News Week in Review for the week of July 4th. From Little Falls Radio, this is Farm Director Scott Colum saying thanks for listening and check us out weekdays at 6.35 a.m. and 4 p.m. on AM 960 KLTF and at 10 a.m. on Q92 WYRQ or 24-7 at fallsradio.com.